redistricting. That in and of itself can be confusing, but when you add the fact that the Department of Justice is now suing the state of Texas on how they redrew the lines for both state and federal offices, it can get even more complicated. We're talking about court cases here. Professor Jesse Crossan joins us. He's an assistant professor of political science at Trinity University. I call him my redistricting friend because <laughs> you're an expert in all things redistricting, or at least I think so. But uh, talk about this lawsuit that we saw from the Department of Justice and what it means. It, I, I'm correct, right? It does cover both the federal and the state house things that were redrawn. Yeah, you're absolutely correct, Stephen. Thanks for having me. Um, so the federal suit actually names two San Antonio uh, districts explicitly in the 45-page uh, suit. Uh, one is the State House District 118, which wraps around the southern and eastern portions. Actually, it wraps around about three-fourths of San Antonio. And one of the reasons it was mentioned, I think, is because of how crazy it looks. Uh, yeah, there it is. Um, but also uh, the Congressional District 23, which is Tony Gonzalez's district, was also flagged as a potentially problematic district. The thing to know about these lawsuits is that they are explicitly racially focused. So previous case law has suggested um, that uh, a really strong grounds for, uh, for suing a, a map creation has to do with race. So you very seldom will get a map overturned because it's unfair from the perspective of partisanship. You will get a map overturned if it is unfair from the perspective of race, which is the focus of this particular lawsuit. Okay, so what comes next here? Because we have this suit now from the DOJ, but there were several other groups that have already filed suit against the redrawn maps in Texas. We know that we're just months away from the primaries in March. So what should be, we be watching in terms of the impact of these legal challenges? That's a, it's a great question, and there is a little bit of uncertainty around this. So one thing that the Attorney General Merrick Garland has explicitly asked for um, is that we use the old maps until we can get greater scrutiny on these new ones, and that would, of course, apply uh, to, uh, to the upcoming elections. It remains to be seen whether uh, uh, whether judicial branch will, will acquiesce on that. Um, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, depending on how um, strong the cases. It is worth noting, though, that this is the first time uh, in about uh, 50, 60 years that uh, Texas has not been subject to so-called preclearance. Uh, in other words, it used to be because of our heritage as a southern state that DOJ had the ability to basically veto one of our maps before it ever even became law. Now the shoe is on the other foot, foot so to speak, in uh, it used to be DOJ had to make us prove that our map was not discriminatory. Now DOJ has to prove that our map is discriminatory. Uh, and this is the first time we've had this in many, many years. And so there's a little bit of uncertainty. And I could see the court being a bit conservative, not in the political sense, um, but in being very, very careful in how they handle this situation. Is this something that's going all the way that will likely go all the way to the Supreme Court? Or is there a district court that will step in? and rule on this and and what's the timeline that we're looking at before something's decided in all this i mean obviously well, the, the courts could do nothing and we just have a march primary with the new maps correct I, that's possible i i and of course in the second i say that that won't happen is when it'll happen but <laughs> um my guess is that a district court will make an, a preliminary ruling on it before anything else happens and uh, if I were to guess, these, these primaries are coming up so quickly that unless the judge makes a really, really definitive um, uh, decision, that the best that uh, Democrats can hope for is that they'll get to keep the current maps. Um, they're almost certainly not going to get raw, re, new redrawn maps for, uh, for March because that process takes time. And even if they win in the district court, uh, Governor Abbott, Abbott and Ken Paxton are almost certainly going to appeal. Uh, that decision. Uh, so we're looking at a fairly long drawn out process that hopefully will be wrapped up by the general election. But even there, there's no guarantee. Um, our judicial system is not designed to move quickly. Uh, in fact, most of American politics is not designed to move quickly. And in fact, we need it to move quickly right now. 
And we should point out the map that, that we're showing right now. That is the old map. Texas has gained two congressional seats with the new census information. So that's a big factor in this uh, redistricting. And now we've talked about how these lawsuits are piling up against this new map. We've had Latino rights groups uh, previously filing civil or excuse me, lawsuits to challenge them. But then the DOJ suit that came yesterday. So in terms of how they're all stacking up, is there a, a lawsuit that would take a bigger precedent over some of these other ones? I mean, is there going to be one that really makes its way to the front that we should be watching? Well, a federal suit due to the supremacy clause is almost certainly uh, going to take precedence. Uh, and especially because the legal grounds for the federal ones are going to be much stronger uh, than uh, than others. Um, it's worth noting, though, that I don't I would be shocked to learn that the attorney general here in Texas is surprised by this. Um, you know, Texas gained two congressional seats largely as a result of increases in the minority population. So uh, not just Latinx, but also black Texans. Uh, and in fact, in the in the Dallas area, where I actually think the, the court case is the strongest, uh, as many people know, a lot of the counties that, that make up the Dallas-Fort Worth area are either majority minority uh, or really close to it. And there's not a single district uh, in, uh, in the Dallas area, including Eddie Bernice Johnson's longtime majority minority district. There's not a single district that is any longer majority minority. Uh, I think that raised a lot of people's eyebrows, including, I'm guessing, the Department of Justices. Um, and uh, and so I, you have to figure that that the attorney general saw this coming and that sort of understands that we're in, in line for a fairly long fight ahead of us. One last question for you. I know that there's a new because there's two new districts that were created. What happens if they go back to the old map with these new districts? Uh, that will be up to the court. Uh, because a lot of times when this happens, um, it, it happens in states that either lost districts or it had no change at all. Um, we're in a situation where we didn't just gain one, uh, we gained two. So the state would have to look to uh, the court for some sort of guidance on exactly uh, what to do in these, in these situations. Um, it, I, I'm not positive what will happen for the primary, but almost certainly uh, they will uh, devise some sort of uh, court-sanctioned uh, map for the general election, which is what happened, for example, in Pennsylvania a number of years ago. It is a complicated topic, but it boils down to stay tuned uh, yeah. at, at this point to find out what happens next. Professor Crossan, thanks so much for being here. We appreciate it. My pleasure. My pleasure.